In this video series, we will discuss the pathology of breast carcinoma. In the current video, we will discuss the introduction, the biological classification of breast cancers, the incidence and epidemiology, and finally, the risk factors for breast carcinoma. So let's start with the introduction. So the first point to understand is that breast carcinoma is most common non-skin malignancy. What do we mean by non-skin malignancy? The concept is that most common cancers are skin cancers. But as skin cancers are not very deadly, so we categorize the term non-skin malignancy that are important malignancies. So out of non-skin malignancies, breast carcinomas are the most common. The second point is that the histologically, breast carcinomas are adenocarcinomas. The word adeno means glands. So all breast carcinomas, most of the breast carcinomas have at least some degree of glandular differentiation. So most of the breast carcinomas are adenocarcinomas. Now let's discuss the biological classification. The biological classification of breast cancers is based on HER2 and ER. What is HER2? HER2 is actually a gene and if there is over amplification of HER2 in the breast cancers, then we will call this cancer as HER2 positive. While ER means estrogen receptor, so if there are estrogen receptors on the mutated breast cancer cells, we call this ER positive. But this classification is not simple as that. For this to understand, you can see we have classified the breast cancers into three categories. These three categories can be remembered as HEN, H-E-N. Now E stands for ER positive and most of the breast cancers, 50 to 60 percent of the breast cancers are ER positive. And also remember a point that when we say that breast cancer is ER positive, it usually implies that it is HER2 negative. So remember that ER positive breast cancers that are HER2 negative are the most common type of breast cancers. The second, the second common category to be discussed is age, HER2 positive. What is HER2 positive? If in breast cancer cells there is over amplification of HER2 gene, it is called HER2 positive. Now remember that HER2 positive can either be ER positive or ER negative. So remember this point, HER2 positive can be ER positive or it can be ER negative as well and 10 to 20 percent of the breast cancers are HER2 positive. The third category is N which stands for negative. These cancers are called triple negative. Why they are called triple negative? Because they don't have estrogen receptors, they don't have PR which means progesterone receptors and they do not show over amplification of HER2 gene. And about 10 to 20 percent of the cancers belong to this category triple negative. So remember that ER positive tumors are most common. Now let's discuss the incidence and epidemiology. The first point is that it is the most common known skin malignancy in women as we discussed and it is the second leading cause of cancer death. The most common cause of cancer death is lung cancer but the second leading cause of cancer death is breast carcinoma and here there is a graph which you need to understand. In x axis there is age and on y axis there is risk of breast cancer. So as the age increases the risk of developing ER positive breast cancer increases while this trend is weaker in cases of HER2 positive or triple negative cancers. Their incidence or their risk increases slightly with the age but as far as ER positive tumors are concerned their risk increases greatly with the age. So remember this point. Now let's discuss the risk factors related to breast cancer. So you can see there are many risk factors of breast cancer. For example, there are 17 of these and as it is very difficult to remember a long list, so I have categorized it into 5 categories. If you remember these 5 categories, then it will help you easily recall all the risk factors. These categories are personal, social, reproductive, breast related and lifestyle. Let us discuss each of these. The first is personal. Here I mean that age is a great risk factor for breast cancer. Obviously, if the age increases, then just like all other cancers and like all other diseases, the risk of breast cancer increases. Second is the gender and of course, females are at a greater risk of developing breast cancer as compared to males. About 99% of the breast cancers develop in female because in female, the breast is a developing tissue. So you know that the risk of cancer is greatest in those cells that are dividing rapidly. So in females, there is a greater risk of developing breast cancer as compared to the male. The second category is social. Here there are two points. First is family history. 
if a woman has a first degree relative with breast cancer then obviously in that woman also the risk of breast cancer is more because if a first degree relative has breast cancer then there are chances of some genetic predispositions that can lead to increased risk of developing cancer then the second part in the social is geography the women that are american or european are at much greater risk of developing breast cancer as compared to asian and african women so remember these important points now the next category is reproductive and these risk factors related to reproductive history are the most important risk factors so you have to pay special attention to these now as there are so many of these also so i have arranged a logical sequence of a woman reproductive life that will help you to that will help you remember all these sequence so let's see a woman's reproductive life starts with menarche which means beginning of the reproductive cycles then when a woman starts having her reproductive life after a certain amount of years of course she becomes pregnant and pregnancy is followed by breastfeeding then after a certain point at a certain age this ovarian cycle stops and the woman undergoes menopause and again after the menopause post menopausal life start so this is a common sequence a logical sequence of the reproductive history and let us discuss what points are related to each of this event the first case is menarche so the early age of menarche is a risk factor for breast carcinoma why is it so for this you have to first understand the point that the risk of breast cancer is directly proportional to estrogen exposure why is it so the reason is that estrogen is a hormone that has a role in the growth of breast tissue now as the estrogen helps the cells to grow help the breast cells to grow so if in a woman if a breast cell undergo mutation then the estrogen will again cause the mutated cell to proliferate so estrogen exposure is related to the breast cancer now let's see if the woman starts her reproductive cycles at earlier age then in each ovarian cycle a lot of estrogen will be released from the ovarian follicles from the stimulated ovarian follicles so greater the number of reproductive cycles more is the release of estrogen and greater will be the risk of developing breast cancer so in the early age of menarche there is a increased risk of breast cancer the second important event is pregnancy and you have to understand that pregnancy is a protective factor for breast cancer and if a woman is nulliparous which means that she does not have any child or has fewer children then the risk of breast cancer is increased as compared to a woman who has multiple pregnancies similarly delayed child bearing which means if a woman bears a child at a later age then this is also a risk factor for breast cancer now what is the reason for this the reason is that during pregnancy normally the breast tissue undergoes maturation so as the pregnancy causes the breast tissue to mature so if a woman becomes pregnant multiple times throughout her reproductive age it will protect her from the breast cancer however if the woman does not become pregnant in her reproductive age then it will become a risk factor because there is loss of protection that is conferred by the pregnancy the third important event is breastfeeding and breastfeeding also reduces the risk factor of breast cancer and if there is a woman who does not breastfeed her babies she will be at a greater risk of breast cancer why is it so the reason is that during breastfeeding what happens normally that ovarian cycle stops and as ovarian cycle stops so the stimulated follicles do not release estrogen and as there will be less estrogen the chances of breast cancer will be decreased because we have discussed that breast cancer risk is related to estrogen exposure now if the woman does not breastfeed often reduced breastfeeding then obviously the ovarian cycle will not stop and the woman will undergo normal ovarian cycles in her life these ovarian cycles will result in estrogen secretion from the stimulated follicles and again increased estrogen will lead to breast cancer so reduced breastfeeding is a risk factor for breast carcinoma fourth point is menopause late menopause is a risk factor for breast carcinoma why is it so because late menopause mean that the ovarian cycles will stop at a later age and as the ovarian cycles are being stopped at a later age so again there will be more estrogen released during these ovarian cycles 
which will increase the risk of breast carcinoma. Last point is postmenopause. So if a woman is having hormonal replacement therapy in the postmenopausal period, then if the hormonal replacement therapy contains estrogen, again estrogen will increase the risk of breast carcinoma. So related to reproductive life, the risk factors are early age of menarche, nulliparity or having fewer children, delayed childbearing, reduced breastfeeding, late menopause and use of hormonal replacement therapy. Now there is a very important point which is not written here but you have to remember that the use of oral contraceptive pills does not increase the risk of breast cancer. Remember this important point. This is often asked in MCUs that oral contraceptive pills even though they sometimes contain estrogen but they are not shown to increase the risk of breast carcinoma. Remember the point. Now the fourth category of risk factors is breast related and in my personal opinion these are not very important risk factors to mention in the exam but still as it is written in the book so let me tell. The first risk factor in this category is benign breast disease. You know that when we discussed benign epithelial changes of the breast we discussed that in proliferative disease without atypia there is slightly increased risk of breast cancer and in proliferative disease with atypia there is generally a larger increase in the risk of breast cancer. Next point is breast density. So if on the radiographic image there is breast density, there are breast densities then these breast densities correlate with the risk of breast cancer. And of course if there is carcinoma of contralateral breast or endometrium then again it points out some genetic predispositions that will increase the risk of breast cancer. The last category is lifestyle related and of course if the diet is not good it will result in slightly increased risk of breast cancer. For example, heavy alcohol drinking has shown to increase the risk of breast carcinoma. Obesity again increases the risk of breast carcinoma. Similar is the effect of lack of exercise and in, in the environment some chemicals like organochlorine pesticides also increase the risk of breast cancer. So all these are the risk factors of the breast carcinoma out of which these reproductive factors are the most important.